One more. For a select few. <laughs> So the second part of the question that's asked is, do you think it's for everyone or for a select few? And what Bernard is talking about is this. He says, let us examine the textbook of our personal experience. Look inward. Notice your own familiarity with the things. I will say, I wonder if there is someone here who has had an opportunity to say of Christ, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Only a few can truly admit this. Mm -hmm. So I ask, do you feel that you've been kissed in this intimate way with the kisses of Christ's mouth? Or do you think it's only for a select few? Let's go with the other table that did this. Sure. Microphone, please. So, first of all, do you feel that you've had this experience, or do you think it's only for a select few that can have it? I think it's for the, the one that, that does decide to turn to Christ. I mean, it is. It, it's a double-layer question. It, it can be a select few, but it can be for anybody that desires to, you know, turn to Christ. Very and good. Those who can see will see. Those who do not see will not see. Yes. Um, I think can be said of any nature whether it's a, a deep friendship that you've had for 20 years or whatever or a spousal relationship husband and wife it's not something that is very it's not superficial is what I'm getting at it takes work it takes work well guess what Should, all the more our relationship with God is going to take work but Who's the one missing out if we don't tap into the love that God has for us? Us. We miss out. It's not that it's not there or it's not for me. It's just that I, I'm not putting in the time. As I said in various tables, if we treated God, right, or let's re re reverse it. If we were to treat our friends the same way we treat God, how close would we be to those friends? Right? So if you're spending a lot of time with your friends, you're going out, you're doing this, you're doing that, uh, that, that equal amount, put an equal amount of time with God. Are you spending that time in prayer, in scripture reading, in devotional reading, in attending adoration, things like that? Or is it... I, I go to church on Sunday and I'm done and then I just do whatever and I don't give them a never mind. You see what I mean? If you treated your friends like that, oh, I can't talk to you now, I'm busy with something else. I can't pray now, I'm busy with, you, you see what I mean? If we were to treat God in the same way as we treat, or our, if we treat our friends the same way we treat God, we probably wouldn't have them as close because we're not giving them the time. Do you see what I mean? So that, we, we, we keep coming back to that analogy. God is there. God is waiting. It's up to us to take advantage of that. And the more we do, guess what happens? The closer the relationship happens. It's completely reciprocal. So this intimacy that St. Bernard is talking about which is analogized by let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Kissing with the mouth implies an intimacy. Okay? And 
How ready are you for that? Do you put in the time? Do you care? You see what I mean? Yes, Chris. Wait, wait, wait. Microphone, I want to hear this. Where is it? Say it better. Don't listen to me, listen to the saints. <laughs> amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen? Gosh, that was a quick amen. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm offended. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> but that's exactly it. You don't know this experience? You're not sure? I've never had a love. Then guess what? Seek it. Because he is waiting for us to seek because those who seek, find. Those who knock, get doors open. Ask, seek, knock, and you will get. Yes? That's a personal experience that was part of my life, like before I met my beautiful wife. Um, I was alone, and every night I was praying, and find God answer for God, you know. It was, I was so many problems in my life, and it was, like two o'clock in the morning, the Holy Spirit said, like, wake up, pray, pray, pray. I was persistent for like 20, almost 30 days, praying, but not like 10 minutes. I was like, spent hours and hours. So finally, God gave me the answer. That's what the part I understand, I feel like. If you're persistent with God, guess what? He will answer the prayers. He yes. still answers the prayers. His yes. hand is always right. And I say it because I, Give all the glory to him. Amen. I know he Amen. 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 Very good. I love that. And that's what St. Bernard is talking about in this first part of his third sermon. Let's examine the textbook of our personal experience. Is it there? If it's not, seek it. Because he's willing and able and wanting to share his love for us. He loves us first. He loves us more. More than what? More. Just more. You know why? He made us out of love. He made us out of his love. So that we could love him and others back. That's what all of human experience is here for. That's what we're here for. To experience the love that created us so that we can in turn give it back. But if we've never experienced it, how can we give what we don't have? And if we don't have it, what's the advice? Seek it. Because it's there. It's there. Last one, and I don't have an extra copy, so I'm going to come over here to this table to ask the question. So it's this table, this table, and Seth's table. Don't think I've forgotten you. <laughs> Sermon 3. Part B, it says, I've gone to confession. Why can't I see Jesus face to face? Allah, what he says here in the first paragraph. This is what St. Bernard wrote in this paragraph. Yet there is another important step. It remains too early for the kisses of his mouth. Now is the time to kiss his hand. If Jesus assures me my sins are forgiven, how does that help me if I continue to sin? If I walk in the dirt after washing my feet, what have I gained? He who leads me to repent will also give me the ability to live fittingly. It is not enough to be forgiven. My forgiveness must bear fruit. It would be a terrible loss to return to my former ways. And then he quotes a proverb. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats its folly. So the question is, 
I've gone to confession. Why can't I see Jesus face to face? What is needed? What more is needed? Microphone. See, I can shout. I, I, I can see my school. I know how to do this. <laughs> what more is needed? Well, we need to love Jesus as much as he loves us. Oh. Oh. Wow. Wow. That, that, that says it all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Still water is running deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want the rum I'm not even gonna add to that. That's perfect. I'm gonna go on to question two. Do we need do we grow spiritually on our own power? This table. <laughs> That was marvelous. Yes. Profound. That's what Bernard was saying is that forgiveness isn't enough. That forgiveness needs to bear fruit. You need, you need to do. You've been forgiven. Amen. Amen. That, that, you need that step. You need it. Now, show, show what that grace has done. Show what that grace is. That's how we grow. What, we, what are we talking about here? We're talking about growing and maturing in spiritual life. In spiritual life. That's what all of these sermons are focusing on. And I'm looking at the time. Verse 2 says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. But Bernard says we can't start here. We actually start at the feet of Jesus. We kiss his feet first. That's where we begin. In repentance. Like the sinful woman in the story in Luke mm -hmm. that came to the Pharisee's house. What did she do? She cried. she cried at his feet and wiped him with her hair. And what did Jesus say about that? Her many sins are forgiven. And then he looked to the Pharisee, who was criticizing her. Well, if this man were a prophet, he'd know what kind of woman is touching him. Uh -huh. And Jesus said, really? Did you wash my feet when I came in? No. Did you give me any oil for my head when I came in? These were all um, uh, gestures of, of uh, hospitality that you would do for anyone that came to your home. He said, did you do any of that? No, but this woman hasn't stopped kissing my feet and crying and washing them with her hair. And I tell you, her many sins are forgiven. And what's the moral to the story, Jesus said? Those who have been forgiven much, love much. But those who have been forgiven little, Love little. See, the Pharisee didn't think he needed the love of Jesus. And so guess what? Very little love of Jesus. Because he was self-sufficient. Do you, you, you hear what I'm saying? But the sinful woman, she had nothing to lose. You know what I mean? So she gave everything to Jesus. And as a result, loved much forgiven much. You see that? So that's where Bernard says we begin. And then as we grow in the faith, we move to the hand. We kiss his hand. Because that's a level up of intimacy. We're moving up out of that, 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 that repentant state and we're growing in the faith. So we kiss his hand out of gratitude, thanks, and we live that out. The third stage of this development is where we see him face to face as, if you will, an equal, as his bride. We're never equal to God. Don't, 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 get, don't get me wrong. 
But what I'm saying is, as we mature in the faith, we move up to that level of intimacy, that, if you will, mystical marriage level, where we have that intimacy with Christ, where we kiss with the kisses of his mouth. We're at that level. Yes. Would you say that that would be the holiness? Yes, that is. That's growth in holiness. That's exactly what he's talking about. So in this second level that he's talking about, we have to show the fruits of our repentance. We gain the forgiveness. How come I'm not intimate with God all the way automatic like that? We have to grow in it. We have to cultivate it. And that cultivation leads to holiness. And that's the ultimate goal. So let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. His love is better than wine. That's the cry of the soul for this intimacy that only God can provide. Only God can provide. And it's, if you will, analogized in this human way of a lover, of the beloved, wanting her lover to come to her. Do you see that? That's the, if you will, by analogy, the cry of the church. Oh, that he can kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. It's also the cry of each individual soul. Me, you, everyone. And hopefully, in this process of studying this song, we can experience this. Get some of that. Light a fire in your soul for that greater depth, that love that's there. You just need to, if you will, tap into it. And the only thing that's holding us back, my brothers and sisters, is right here. This old stubborn, sinful heart. That's what's stopping it. It's not God. It's me. And oh, that he would kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. His love is better than mine. Le back group, Seth's group. You want to add anything to that? Well, this is the next kind of thought process. Uh, take the last question. Where do you think he was going?